By the end of this video, you'll know how to surface model a shoehorn in Fusion 360. Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy and welcome to the Product Design Online YouTube channel where I demo all things Fusion 360. If you're new here, be sure to hit that red subscribe button and go ahead and comment below and let me know what you plan on using Fusion 360 for. If you're not familiar, a shoehorn is a curved instrument that's used to ease your heel into a shoe. And they're particularly helpful when you're trying to put on dress shoes or loafers as they help you slip the shoe on without stepping on or creasing that back heel. Now I used to have a shoehorn, but it always seems to go missing, so I decided it would be fun to model one so I can 3D print a new one. So to get started, you'll want to enter the patch workspace. I'll simply select the workspace dropdown list and then select the patch option. You could use the loft command in the model workspace, but because this is a fairly thin object with some curvature to it, I decided it would be easier to use the loft command in the patch workspace. The loft command in the patch workspace allows you to create thin surfaces with no real thickness, and we can thicken the surface at the end. The benefit of this is that we don't have to worry about a closed profile shape getting messed up or causing any errors while working with the loft command. So to start off, I'm going to draw the spline that we'll use as the loft's center line. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter S as in Sierra to call the sketch shortcuts box. I'll type out fit point spline and I'll click on the fit point spline option to activate the spline command. Then I'm going to select the YZ origin plane as the plane to start the sketch on. Shoehorns come in all different shapes and sizes, so I'm just going to draw a simple spline curve and then I'll dimension it to the size that I want. And of course, you can use whatever dimensions you desire. I'll start off by clicking on the origin point for the first point of the spline. Then I'm going to click a second point a little bit higher. And for the third and final point, I'll click on the X axis. And I'll simply click the enter key on the keyboard to confirm the results and to escape the spline command. The first dimension I want to add is the overall dimension of the shoehorn. I'm going to hit the keyboard shortcut letter D as in Delta to activate the sketch dimension tool. Then I'll simply click on the first point of the spline and the last point of the spline. The dimension input will appear after I click to set the dimension in place. I'm going to type out 13 centimeters for the length and I'll hit the enter key. With the dimension tool still active, I'm going to add a second dimension. I'll click on the first point and then the second point, And this time I'm going to drag my mouse straight up so I can add a distance for the length between each point. I'll type out 50 millimeters and click the enter key. Lastly, I want to add a dimension of 16 millimeters to the height of the spline. I'll click the first point and the second point, but this time I'll drag the dimension tool to the left which will let me plug in a height or the dimension of 16 millimeters. We now have the spline that we'll use for the loft's center line. Since we're done with this sketch, I'll go ahead and hit the stop sketch button in the toolbar. At this point, I want to create a curved shape for the front of the shoehorn. Now I want to ensure that it's drawn at the beginning of the spline, so I'll want to create a construction plane that's attached to the spline's starting point. I'll select the Construct drop-down list, and I'll select the Plane Along Path. Then I'll select the spline as the path, and I can either type out 0 for the distance, or I can drag the blue directional arrow to make sure that the plane is at the starting point of the spline. Finally, I'll click OK to confirm the location. Now we're going to need another plane at the other end of the spline for the second profile. So I'll right click and select Repeat Plane Along Path. I'll select the spline once again, and then I'll drag the blue directional arrow until the construction plane is at the end point of the spline. 
And of course, then I'll click OK. Let's go ahead and draw the front curve of the shoehorn. I'll select Create Sketch in the toolbar, and then select the construction plane at the front of the spline. To create this curve shape, I'm going to use the three point arc. From the sketch dropdown list, I'll select the arc flyout folder, and then I'll select the three point arc. I'm just going to draw the arc out above the origin point, and then I'll dimension the arc and constrain it into place. I'll click once to the left to place the first point, and I'll click a second time to place the second point of the arc. And I'll click a third time to place the third point, which defines the arc's curvature. Next, I'll constrain this arc to the origin point, or this first point of the spline. That way the profile and the path are connected, which is required for the loft command. I'll select the midpoint constraint from the sketch palette, or if you're using the new UI preview, you'll need to select the midpoint constraint up here in the toolbar. To apply the constraint, I'll select the arc and then select the origin point, and you'll see that the midpoint of the arc is snapped to the point, and this triangle signifies a midpoint constraint. Once again, I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter D as in delta to activate the dimension tool. For this dimension, I'll select both endpoints of the arc and type out 50 millimeters. With the dimension tool still active, I'll select the first point and the origin point and drag my mouse cursor to the left. This will let me add a dimension for the height and I'll type out 10 millimeters for the height. To fully constrain this sketch, I'll repeat these steps on the other side. With the dimension tool still active, I'll select the other endpoint of the arc and the origin point. I'll drag my mouse cursor to the right and this will let me add a dimension for the height, and I'll type out 10 millimeters. Now this first sketch profile is now done, so I'll select the Stop Sketch button in the toolbar. I'll hit the Home icon next to the View Cube to take a look at this model from the Home position. Before we use the Patch Workspace Loft command, we'll need to draw the second profile at the end of the center line because the loft command requires a minimum of two profiles. One thing that I want to point out real quick, you'll notice that the first construction plane disappeared. And that's because by default, Fusion 360 assumes that after you finish a sketch, you're done using that plane for the time being. If you would like to, you can change this in your preferences. Otherwise, if all you need to do is use it later on in the model, you can simply turn it on by hitting the corresponding light bulb in the Fusion 360 browser. Let's create a sketch on the second construction plane. I'll right click on the sketch plane and I'll select Create Sketch. For this profile, I'm going to simply draw a straight line. I'll select the line tool from the sketch drop down list. Then I'll click twice to draw a line above the spline's endpoint. Once again, I'll select the midpoint sketch constraint from the sketch palette, and I'll click the line and the endpoint of the spline. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter D, and I'll add a dimension by selecting the line. For this dimension, I'll type out 30 millimeters, and then I'll select stop sketch in the toolbar. We now have the framework finished for the loft command, so I'll activate the loft command by selecting it from the create dropdown list. For the first profile, I'll select the arc, and for the second profile, I'll select the straight line that we just created. You'll see that the loft command is already connecting the two profiles, so we'll need to add our spline as the center line. I'll select center line as the guide type, because this Rails option would be used if our path wasn't directly down the center. Then I'll select the plus symbol in the Rails section of the dialog box, and I'll select the spline in the canvas window. Now before hitting OK, I'll change the operation to New Component, so we can move all the bodies that we create to be nested under this component. And I'll go ahead and click OK. If I toggle open the component and the bodies folder in the Fusion 360 browser, 
you'll see that the surface body icon is next to the body name. You can also tell that we have a surface body because the face is yellow instead of gray. Because surface bodies technically have no real thickness to them, we'll need to use the thicken command to make this an object that we can actually print out. I'll select the thicken command near the bottom of the create dropdown list. Then I'll select the face if it isn't automatically selected. And I'll type out a dimension of three millimeters for the thickness, followed by hitting the OK button in the dialog box. One of the last things we need to do to our model is round over the corners so the shoehorn can actually be used. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter F as in Foxtrot to activate the fillet command. Then I'll simply select the front two corners of the shoehorn and I'll type out 12 millimeters for the fillet radius. One of the nice things about the fillet command is that it was recently updated to allow you to create multiple fillets with a different specified radius. To do so, I'll click the plus symbol to add a new selection, and this time I'll select the back two edges of the model. I'll type out 16 millimeters for the fillet radius after selecting the back edges, and then I'll click OK in the fillet dialog box. We'll also want to add a fillet to the edge of the shoehorn, so I'll right click to select repeat fillet. Now the reason I'm making this a different fillet command is because if I click the edge now, it will select all the way around the object. Whereas before, it wouldn't let us do that because the other fillet commands would affect it. I'll make sure both the top and the bottom edges are selected, and I'll type out a dimension of 1.5 millimeters before clicking OK in the fillet dialog box. Now the last thing that I want to do to the shoehorn is add a hole near the top so a string could be added. I'll head up to the Construct dropdown list, and this time I'll select Plane Tangent to Face at Point. This type of construction plane lets us create a plane using the face of some geometry while using the point to dictate the direction that the plane faces. I'll select this top face of the shoehorn, and then for the point, I'll select one of these two endpoints of the fillet radius, and then I'll click OK. I can now create a center circle by selecting C as in Charlie for the center circle command. I'll select the construction plane that I just created, and I'll click on the Y axis to place the circle. As I drag out my mouse, you'll notice that I can type out the dimension. I'll type out 5 millimeters followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place. Then I'll click to set the circle. Lastly, I'll hit the escape key to exit the circle command. I'll right click to select the sketch option in the marking menu, and then straight to the left I will select the sketch dimension tool. I'm just going to add a dimension from the center point of the circle to the end point, and I'll make this 10 millimeters. All we have left is to cut out the hole. So I'll hit the letter E as in echo to call the extrude command. I'll select the circle. I'll drag the directional arrow down, which changes the operation to cut. And then I'll change the extent to all. And I'll click OK in the dialog box. I selected the All option in case I was to go back and change the thickness of this model later on. Then the whole cutout will always remain cut out and I won't have to worry about updating it. The last thing I'll do is toggle open the Bodies folder in the Fusion 360 browser and I'll drag the body down so it's nested under the component. I'll also go ahead and do this with the Sketch folder as well so everything is nested neatly under the same component which helps if I want to make copies or if I wanted to insert this into another design. To 3D print this model, all you'll need to do is simply right click on the component and click Save as STL. Then from the Save as STL dialog box, you can select your slicing software, which will output the file directly to it, or you can save the file to your local machine. If you have access to a 3D printer and you're going to print this out, then go ahead and let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what type of printer you have and what type of settings you use. 
And of course, if you have a photo of the finished object, go ahead and link to that below. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.